English translation, 98th contact, Friday, 30th December, 1977, 2334 HRs. As I promised you, I want to send you a message from Sim Yase today. Her condition is very satisfying and she feels in good health. She has no complaints, no deficiency symptoms. In love, she sends her greetings to you and all group members and thanks everyone for their deep sympathy for her illness. Thank you very much, Quetzal. I am also to give you all my best wishes and greetings, which you are to deliver to Sim Yase. I want to gladly do that. Goodbye then, my friend. I will inform you again about Sim Yase's condition in the next few days. Wait, wait, not so fast, my friend. I have two or three more questions for you. Then speak, because my time today is unfortunately very limited. I did not know that. I also want to be brief. First, I want to give you my best regards for my cannibal. She agrees that you should call her what I do. But this should be only an exception for you, as she expressly said. She delights me very much with it, and she should be sure of my thanks. It is very strange to me that I feel joy in such matters, because so far such things were strange to me, but I feel quite exhilarated by this joy. You slowly become a barbarian, just as we are barbarians. We lead a quite hard and sometimes even difficult life, but we are also connected to adventure and often quite beautiful feeling-based stirrings. Your explanation is of an undeniable logic. But I also recognize the sting from the fact that you point out to me that we have become too soft in certain things. Exactly. You have very good ears. But I see, my son, that you are versatile and that you still react naturally. This might also be the reason why you react to certain things, including feeling-based ones of us Earth humans in such a form that you feel joy in them. My inner life is probably not hidden from you. You were born too late for that. I, what are you trying to express? It is un- uh, Ha ha ha, now I understand. You are incorrigible in your form of expression and your descriptions. I understand, ha ha ha. I am some centuries older than you, and yet I was born too late for you. That, ha 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 ha, that is really good. I understand you very well now. I am glad, but look. I still have some questions. Do you know the exact times of the individual group members? So when and how long do they have to stay in the center? And do you know how much time the individual members have to make up if they cannot fulfill their time? I can give you all the information about this because the basic tasks in this regard fall within my direct area of work. Good then. Micho and Margareth could not fulfill their time yesterday and today. Micho had to leave yesterday because of work, and was therefore not available, while Margaret was very tired today, exhausted, and also a little ailing. How much time do the two have to catch up now? For a moment, yes. Micho is going to have four more sessions, while Margaret has three. This results from the fact that there are no further days of high performance to be recorded with them. But I do not quite get it. You are talking about more days. Does that mean that it is additional days, including or excluding the one or the lost one? The unfulfilled time has to be added. Understood. But you know that these times must be fulfilled by the 5th of February at the latest? I know. But now another question, this time about Amada. She has been gone for about eight days now, and we have not heard from her. Only via Maria and Engelbert does she inform us about her remaining and so on. What should I do about her? As you know, I analyzed her concerns after it emerged from the monitoring records in the center that she made no effort whatsoever to accomplish her task. In the course of my analysis, I came up with findings that are of an extremely regrettable nature, such as, for example, that her thinking is pronounced according to the will, her suggestive desires in this respect, which she has nurtured and cultivated for a long time, 
ultimately led her to fall prey to such a powerful form of auto-suggestion that it formed into a delusion. From this delusion, however, her sense of reality contracted, according to which she is temporarily no longer capable of distinguishing the real from the unreal. From this, in turn, arose the malfunction of the relevant consciously desirable truths, namely that she had achieved her desired goal in the moments that seemed appropriate. This has developed so much in her that it will simply no longer be possible for her in this life to ever neutralize these very pronounced delusions of an allegedly achieved goal of her desires and to see the real truth, let alone to recognize it. In the course of time, her form of imagination and delusion has also given rise to the fixed idea that she should take the position of, because this has been decreed by us for her. This in turn gives rise to an egoism without measure, which has become her own, and which is directed in particular against. This egoism, which is anchored in claims of possession, I inevitably had to aus arten verb, to get very badly out of the good human nature, into very profound and vicious jealousy, which of course are shot down from her like poisoned arrows. In the erroneous hope, that this would enable her to achieve and fulfill her impossible desires. She also urged dishonesty, eccentricity, and other rather negative osartungen plural noun version of having gotten very badly out of the good human nature. Thus she constantly accuses different irregularities, like attacks against herself, as well as all impossible displacement of responsibilities, etc., which show no truth content whatsoever. She has already become so deeply entangled in this. Two, in partly knowing and partly imaginary form, that she is no longer able to recognize clear boundaries here either that she herself therefore no longer knows how to decide what is consciously invented in malicious form and what is unconsciously acted upon by her. However, her mistaken ideas take her much further, because very consciously she also acts wrongly. In relation to the untrue statements to you, that she is in contact with Simyase, Pta, Arahat Athersata, the Patahli level and me, etc., she consciously asserts this for the pure purpose of pushing herself to the fore in order to reach the first position, always in the equally erroneous hope that you would have to be bound by it, and that thereby her dreams would also come true, at least those which she does not already imagine to be fulfilled without salvation. On the other hand, however, she also addresses the group members regarding the alleged contacts, etc because there is also a mistaken hope connected with this, namely that these would concern you over time, after which you would then have to be rebuked by them, since she, Amada, would have contact with us and would be in the front line, etc. and so on. This erroneous thinking and acting of hers, which she truly only imagines and which is based on false assumptions, has become dangerous for the whole group and our entire task because her erroneous talk and forms of thinking, as well as her deliberately false talk and accusations, etc., are already beginning to have a demoralizing and destructive effect. Engelbert and his wife Maria have already run into difficulties in this regard, and the untruthful speeches of Amata have led them into moral and psychological disharmonies. What you should do now is to confront Amata and explain to her clearly and openly all concerns, which, however, as my probability calculation shows, will not lead to a good and valuable success. But if she does not really think of anything better, then only one way would be open, namely that Amata leaves your flat-sharing community and only comes to you for an hour every week or every month, which you should explain to her. As for her silence for days on end, since she has not contacted you for eight days, this is also purpose-related, because here, too, she currently has the erroneous hope 
that she could reach her goal. She is particularly concerned with the assumption that Engelbert and Mary would harass you in order to pressure you with her untruthful statements and confused assertions, according to which you would then also grant her the unlawful right, because you would thereby have to reach her Amata's side. Damned shit, I really do not see this theater any other way. But your advice that Amata should move away from our direct fellowship, by which I mean living here, has been given to me by other group members. Maybe there really is nothing else left. Amata's very unfortunate thinking and acting leaves this as the only form of advice if she does not very quickly turn to another sensibility which is anyway extremely questionable in her delusional state of imagination, which unfortunately we cannot resolve either. It would be very irresponsible for you to keep her in your direct community if she does not want to change her destructive thinking. I will see what I can do. Then I have one last question. Do you know anything about elemental beings, about witches? as well as an organization in Findhorn that deals extensively with elemental beings and biological horticulture, resulting from, deals with? I am aware of the concerns about this. Some time ago, you asked Simya say what I was trying to find out because we did not know anything about it. But what exactly do you want to know about it? But the truth is that it does not yield a lot of words to say about it. Well, I know about the existence of witches, the elementary beings. As far as I know, they do not connect with us very coarse material terrestrial humans in linguistic or telepathic communicative form. One can probably see these beings on good occasions, but this presupposes a complete equalizedness in conscious form of human beings. Now my question, which is also a question of Elsie and Margreth, who were in Findhorn this year and looked into the matter there. What is being done there, and how real is everything there? Are those people there actually directly or indirectly connected with elementary beings, and are they able to obtain information from them about the biological elementary cultivation of plants, etc.? What do you think about it? I do not know, but according to my knowledge, such contacts should not lie in the realm of the possible because to my knowledge all elementary forms of being are in much higher vibration ranges, so also in all telepathic and acoustic communicative ones, and are not able to penetrate into our lower lying ranges. With your explanation, you have given yourself the truthful answer. What exists in Findhorn, as well as in branches spread from there in different countries, is founded on purely delusional aspects. The existence of the elementary beings cannot be denied, for their existence is proven and of vital necessity, especially for the world of flora and fauna, but it is completely impossible for the terrestrial human being to be in contact with them acoustically or telepathically or in any other manner, but also not the elementary forms with the terrestrial human being. The persons operating in Findhorn who identify themselves or try to identify themselves with alleged contacts with elementary beings, are quite simply delusional in nature and live in the state of an acute and chronic imagination, which has sometimes even assumed very strong delusional forms, in connection with a rather peculiar belief in hierarchy, which is connected with suggestive meditation and also corresponding prayers, etc., very precisely examined in an analytical manner, this enterprise is a further outgrowth of a dangerous cult religion without actual value, which furthermore ended in a stagnation of consciousness, even if the appearance is different. But tell me, why do they have such a horrendous success with their cultivation methods, which are allegedly attributed to elementary beings by them? This is mainly due to the fact that cult followers of this form usually develop a considerable instinct for seemingly fruitless, but in reality exceptionally valuable and fertile planting ground, on... You mean very fertile soil that seems fruitless and perhaps even barren to the outside world? That is the meaning of my words. On this soil, all plant forms thrive excellently. Furthermore, 
The fanatical or purely religious attitude of those concerned plays an important role because these vibrations in turn influence the plants and drive them to grow, after which they must grow very well. Then at least this attitude is not bad for people. The attitude itself not, but the erroneous faith and the resulting false machinations. Well, then another question. Margaret once told me a story about Australia, in connection with elemental beings and a clover stick. The... You once told me about it, but I could not clarify these things. If, however, the representation corresponds to the facts, then no elementary beings were involved in the event, but only Margreth's thought world, which influenced the plant through her wishful swinging waves, and thus allowed it to grow and prosper in the manner that corresponded with her wishes. I find your explanation logical. Then it should be enough for today. Convey to all group members, also from my side, dear greetings, and speak to your cannibal of my special thanks and my special wishes. She is making apparently extraordinary progress, and it is a very special joy for me and her that she is approaching her goal so progressively as no other group member is doing at the moment. Thank you, Quetzal. She will be very happy to hear that from you. It is a great pleasure for me to be able to give her this praise. But again, I almost forgot to explain to you another mishap that Sim Ya Se apparently had with the time declarations. Already? The day before yesterday. I wanted to draw your attention to it. But this disappeared in the course of our conversation. Sim Ya Se mistakenly gave you wrong data for Claire, because her time is not an additional 80 minutes but only eight minutes. Well, then one has to change that. But I still have something to discuss with you that I want to do under public exclusion. Something purely private. Is that still possible? If it does not take too long? The answer. Can I have it in the report? If you like, of course. Good, then. That was unknown to me, and neither Simya Se nor Ptah informed me about it. However, if all things are as you have explained them to me, then your actions are completely correct. Your cannibal is also subject to the same correctness, if it actually corresponds to your sense according to these concerns. This tremendous change in an extremely positive sense only testifies to her true progress in every relationship and her love for you. Feeling-based stirrings of love are revealed by you earth humans by kissing each other, but also certain forms of gratitude you express in this form. For this reason, kiss your cannibal in thanksgiving and love for all her understanding, for her help, and her extremely far-reaching and very valuable progress. Then she falls around my neck, but for you. But I like to do it, my son. But say now, do you not kiss your sweet ones, your girls, and vice versa? Or is that only left to us Earth humans? You want to know a lot. But yes, we also have these feeling-based stirrings. But now goodbye, my friend. Take care, my son. I am starting to like you better and better. Goodbye.